I was woken up in the middle of the night. Our fleet spotted the dark Eldar forces beelining right for us. They somehow just appeared right next to the belt near the civilized world. There goes our idea to at least hit them before they started. Whatever, we planned for this. The largest city planet side had already been prepped. The only people there were volunteers, conscripted convicts, and a few regiments of veteran troopers used to urban fighting, and a few thousand sons to act as support. The human troops were all issued cyanide pills, should they be captured. I just hope that any that do get captured have the time to actually use them. Nobody deserves that fate. They took our bait. Their main force swarmed the largest city. Smaller forces spread all around the planet, targeting every major city with at least a token force. We had reports coming from everywhere. The PG, fleet staff and I watched in our bunker HQ as the hologram showed rigged building after rigged building explode, hopefully taking some damned Xenos with them. A few cities went dark without warning. Damn it, I knew they had some units that could shadow jump. Why didn't I prep for that everywhere? I thought that was the later tech they stole. Why didn't I study their lore more in my past? I send a general order to all leadership's teams to prep defence for such strikes. They can't have too many of those. Amagos showed me the video feed of the Farseer and her warriors attacking some Dark Eldar craft. Why that one? They passed several groups to target that random ship. Why? I send a message through my son's bodyguards to the rest. Maybe they can use that. We received reports about stealth raids being fought inside some bases, though a few more still went silent without warning. I was both terrified and pissed. I can only hope that they at least still explode and took a few damn Xenos with them. I was going over the pics of the Xenos invader symbols. I don't know many of them. I at least have good reason to think Vect is here. I can only wonder what that fucker is doing right now. A few days have passed. The PG's seat of power has fought off everything they've sent. I, of course, have been under house arrest in the bunker complex, almost a thousand metres under said city. The largest city is now a bombed out ruin, littered with Imperial and Dark Eldar scrap and corpses. Most units there fought till the end, blowing themselves in the Xeno sky high or downing pills before being taken. We're pretty sure those that tried to retreat to other Imperial holdouts were taken captive during the effort. The fuckers somehow hacked our radios and monitors to broadcast some of our soldiers being worked on. Then some overly dressed, important looking Eldar showed his face and spoke. I swear, he sounded like he was speaking Welsh or Gaelic. His nearby drone translated what was said in Gothic. Yada yada, I am a great whatever of the house fuckwit, blah blah, and he's offering to just leave the planet if they turn the lore keeper over. Like anyone would believe that. The PG slightly turns to me. You cannot actually believe that offer, right? What is one life compared to an entire world? He asked. The second you hand me over, he would just laugh at your dumbass and keep attacking. I glare to make my contempt of the idea known even more. Also, I would never allow you the chance. Legos doesn't bother moving, but my sunny dogs and thousand sons present bear their weapons. Not at him, but the point is made. A few days later, I received a visit from the PG's 19-year-old daughter, his eldest, as well as two sunny dogs. I was confused until she explained to me why she wanted to speak with me. The governor was actually going to try his luck and betray me. His daughter shot him when he informed her about the plan. My dogs heard her fighting the royal guards and killed those that witnessed the fight. I informed her that her father and his guards were killed fighting off dark elder forces that managed to jump into the bunker. She nodded. Guess the world has a new governor. It was really awkward when she then asked if Durin could stay. Damn it boy, you didn't. Emperor Dom, he did. We were busy fighting off crazed BDSM space elves and he went and seduced the former PG's heiress. The fucker's like 15? Hi! Damn it, this could have been a huge scandal. Wait, Dern's just my ward. I don't think I can leave him here. I don't need this right now. I wash my face to try and forget this shit. Only to see my son bodyguard that followed me into the restroom dead in the mirror. What the actual fuck? Then everything went dark. I felt myself being dragged by my left leg. Thankfully my armour was keeping my head from being dragged on the ground. I slowly opened my eyes and just knew my day was shot. I saw a witch. She was dragging me down a hall. I tried to stealthily hit my panic button to Legos on my left arm. She shifts, clear startled by the movements. I feel her sword pierce my right arm before I even see her draw the damn weapon. I scream in agony. 
I feel a burning pain spreading across my body, but I manage to trigger the panic alarm. Thankfully, my digi ring is on my left hand. I shot the flamer at her. She's fast as fuck though, and I barely get her overly large hair. She looks livid. I would like to tell you that I fought back and give her hell till help arrived, but my world became pain. I felt her blades ravage my body for who knows how long. Her hauntingly sweet, angelic laugh made it all the more surreal. She whispered her pseudo-Welsh taunts in my ear, seemingly and likely feeding off my pain. To my horror, I see more Eldar arrive. Fuck! A dozen or so witches. My sight is spinning so I can't be sure. I think they have an incubus with them. I feel the temperature plummet. My eardrums pop from some pressure. I pray to the god I'm not supposed to believe in. One of the witches is turned to ash by a lightning strike from across the hall. I fade out for a sec. My vision is even more shot now. I can't think straight through the pain. My throat burns from my screaming. I see four blurs of red dancing between the pale shadows. Warp fire keeps the shadows at bay. I briefly see Legos fighting Lilith, the incubus, and a random witch. He cleaves the incubus in half. The haze of pain overtakes me again. I feel something dragging me, too weak to open my eyes. I cough between screams and I can feel the wetness of my blood and bile. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. (laughs) So either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. (laughs) And like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking. So once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties. (laughs) But anyway, let's continue on with the video. My armor is gone. I can feel the cold air in my legs and arms. My body is sore everywhere. Sounds like he has the big coof to me. <laughs> Eyes open to see I'm in a med bay. I notice I'm restrained to the medical bed. I panic. Calm down, you're safe. I see a clearly human doctor walk in. I try and ask how, but I'm unable to speak past my coughing. You damaged your throat. You were screaming even when you were unconscious. We had to pump medicine through your throat for days. Days? Calm down now. The Astartes arrived and crushed the invaders. Though we are still hunting standard Xenos here and there. Despite my pain, I feel a small amount of smugness and glee from the news. If we won and crushed the Xenos scum, all was well. I could recover in time. With Fulgrim and Jaghatai here, they could run the fleet better than I could. We did think you were clinically dead for 12 minutes, but that must have been an error in the equipment. Yeah, error in the equipment. (laughs) Let's go with that. The doc undid my bindings and let me up. I was sore as hell, but able to move. I was in a medical robe. As I took a deep breath in, I noticed the air tasted wrong. The doctor noticed my pause and asked me if I was all right. What did they offer you to play this part? I forced past my ruined throat. He gives me a look of horror. Then his necklace constricted and tore his head off. The noble Eldar from the videos walked into the room. I just glared at his annoyed face. I clearly just ruined his sick fun. He starts ranting as his drone translates. Blah, 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 something about insects, you will tell me the secrets I wish to know, etc. All while I just felt cold. I guess I'm fucked. Am I at some sick stage arena in the Prix Estates in Camorra? I doubt the clown cult would allow that uncontested. They wanted a turn. I was only beaten and forced into a cage. Tame by Dark Eldar standards. They moved me from holding area to holding area. I saw a few more prisoners. I tried my best to hold a stoic posture. I had to hope I was still planet side. I wanted to at least try and keep the others morale up to attempt a breakout, even if I knew it was likely doomed. We are confirmed planet side. They took us to an open air camp. In a twisted way, I was happy they only had about 80 ish captives in the group. I saw some lower castle Eldar fighting over my armour until the noble hit him with a weird-ass whip. He then taunted me, asking if I want my armour back. That was when I saw the damn clowns. They hit the camp fast and hard, giggling like retards the entire time. The dark Eldar craft exploded before the warriors could even fight back. 
The clown fuck then started putting the other prisoners down. It was quick and instant death. While they went cage to cage, their leader just walked up to my cage and stared at me, head tilted. Leave them be! Damn you! I yelled as loud as my throat would allow. I don't think it was even as loud as my normal talking voice. He just started laughing like a madman, only to stop and look to the centre of the camp. The air changed, and there was a snap. Looks like the farseer and a few hundred of her muscle were here now. What the fuck is with this day? The clowns stopped killing the prisoners to circle the craft welders. I could see the farseer argue with the leader of the clown cult. I swear their language is a rip off of Welsh. This continued for a bit as I tried to stay calm and think clearly, only for an escaped prisoner to tap my shoulder and give me the shush. The troopers showed me a set of keys. Thank the big E the fuckers were using normal cages. I jumped on board what was our chance out of here. I quietly told him to free the rest of those alive. I went to get my panic button out of my armour, which I hope I could come back for. Thankfully the crate also had my las pistol and my bolt pistol. I was still in the medical robe, so I grabbed the tattered remains of my shirt in the crate and used it to hold the little ammo that was there. I met back up with the trippers. He had the last ten others. I handed him my las pistol and we bolted. I was spamming the panic button like a junkie playing the gacha. Only a few of us had weapons. Those that didn't tried to take what they could as we made our way out of the camp. We didn't get far uncontested. A clown got one of our guys and those of us with weapons fired. The Xenos acrobat dodged the first few shots but we put that fucker down. We knew we were screwed so we took what cover we could. We gave the now dead escapee's gun to another and took cover in a burned out ruin of some hablock. The Eldar factions were now fighting. This shit show was bound to draw on some more dark Eldar. We took pot shots as one tripper tried to get a PDF radio to work. One of the unarmed guys found it in another crate. We saw a dark Eldar raid ship fly overhead to join this clusterfuck. Miss Farseer and friends fought their way to a ruined shelter. We braced ourselves for the last stand. The few without weapons had taken the time to make makeshift spears out of busted furniture or random bits of metal. We were going to lose guard but not without fighting, damn it. Then she shouted an offer of parlay. Bitch, we're in the middle of a shit show. Just talk. What do you have to say? I grunt out in pain. We are here to rescue you, lore keeper. Bullshit. She tilts her head in confusion. I mean, grok shit. Now she looks mad. I have lost four of my warriors to save you. I cut her off. As if an Eldar would trade their own life for a human. They would, if it would save countless more. I pause. We can clearly hear fighting in all directions. Go on. Behind the cover, a tripper gives me the sign he has reached Imperial forces on his radio. Please, we need this. She starts trying to get me to offer ourselves up to be rescued. This is clearly a ploy to not risk hurting me, so they can get my lore knowledge. As the other forces get nearer, she orders her warriors to move in. We try and fight. The tripper that got us out is gunned down. The other suicide bombs a warrior with some grenades killing them both. I'm pinned down and then taken to the farseer. They force me to kneel before her. She dragged me by my ear onto her ship. What she did next broke me. She took me right to a force of a thousand sons. She was telling me the truth. Those men died for nothing. What the fuck is wrong with me? The thousand sons patched me up and sent forces to get my armour. I was in a daze. They later returned with one escapee still alive but in critical condition. He passed away two days later. I was transported back to HQ. Razitz greeted me when we landed, briefed me on what I missed. Legos lost a hand and an eye, but killed the witch in the incubus. He even managed to chase Lilith after taking one of her arms. The Primarchs had arrived in a system after my rescue. I don't know how long I was in that Thousand Sun outpost. I wasn't all there. My fleet staff were spinning a tale about me being captured and leading a group of fellow escapees to an Imperial outpost. It was like a spit in the face of those guys at the ruin. But the needs of morale. I need a drink and a sleep for days. We got plenty of video of the two Primarchs butchering the Eldar fucks. They managed to free some captives, though the Eldar chose to kill most when they understood they were doomed. I was tasked to go greet the survivors. Greet them and be recorded for more Imperial propaganda. Thankfully, I was never a waster, so I wasn't too hungover. I just hope my scars made me look badass and not just uglier. 
The new PG made some speeches and we started rebuilding. Legos gives me Lilith's capture sword and her severed arm. The blade will make a great trophy. It now rests on my wall right next to my par sword that I still can't use right. I'm back aboard the Grey Citadel. Sava is giving me another massage, which I really needed. I was finally able to relax and just let all the stress fade. That was of course when Raza walks in. Damn it, what now? I'm not mad at him, just to interrupt. Durin is refusing to board. I don't need this right now. Durin wasn't the McDonald's heir, but I did have the right to make a match for him. Fuck it. Send the McDonald's a message about this and we'll help rebuild as we wait. Why was no one watching the teen? And how did he seduce the heiress? I blame Razitz for being the womanizer. Fulgrim has really taken to the rebuilding. He barely rests and seems to be rather enjoying himself. His cheer is spreading among the workers. The Khan is overseeing the movement of the civvies back into rebuilt areas and seeing everyone fed. Jagatai is beyond skilled at this. The food trucks are usually sent before the requests are sent. That's kind of good. I've just been visiting the refuge camp we built once we cleared out the bunker shelters. We got approval from Dern's family to hold a wedding. The boy is getting hitched. At 15. Razit and his officers held a funeral for the boy's freedom. Oh. <laughs> Angron sent word of his adventures. I replied in kind. We moved out after being above this world for months helping rebuild. Our new orders were to head to another mustering point. Fulgrim and Jagatai were to finally take control of their whole legions. Emps would meet us there, as well as Magnus. It wasn't stated, but I think I'm going back to Terra, or following the Big E where he plans to go. The fleet is making great time on our journey. I'm mostly stuck to my flagship. I'm still mentally recovering from my capture. Sleep has been difficult since then. Legos has a new hand and eye. Not that I often see his face. Didn't even know he was black till he greeted me after his operation. <laughs> <laughs> then again, most Kasodis seem to stick to their armour at all times. We almost stopped at the port with Razit's wife, but I pulled rank to get a detour. Not dealing with that again. We sailed straight through past the port. In doing so, we had to ration our supplies. Our officers were pissed, but I had a stash of booze they could have instead. I don't really drink often but lot of nobles give me free bottles. I had a large selection by now. That really smoothed things over. Besides, the rationing wasn't too bad. Just no seconds until we reached the next world. Everyone still got three meals a day. We lost a bit of time, but saved ourselves a ton of drama. The fleet has arrived at an agri world. The whole planet is basically a giant steppe with seasonal rivers and lakes. Locals heard grocks across the world. Only has one true city, were the spaceport to import supplies they trade their grocks meat for. The city is barely a town, but has large areas for the herds and locals to set camps. The governor was stunned when we showed up, but was happy to trade supplies. The locals gifted me a yurt. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I made the menials and trippers build up some of their earthworks around the capital. We parted both in good spirits. Our next stop was a frontier world. Based on what I saw of it, I'm pretty sure this is a maiden world. Though, it's pretty far out. How far did the Eldar at their highest send out terraforming grips? I mark it for Imperial records. Otherwise, we had a nice time sightseeing the nice vistas and major plantations. The Khan, Razitz and I, went with a few soldiers to hunt some of the megafauna. Sava insisted I take her sightseeing to a major town. It was cool to see the steampunk slash Wild West vibe the locals had. We eat at a mom and pop shop before heading back to the Grey Citadel. Next stop was the Hive World. The place was covered in radstorms that swept across the planet. Only had seven hives that inhabited, at least by proper humans, out of 81 when this world was at its peak. The rest were abandoned ruins, infested by mutated horrors and crazed AI. When the Imperium found this world, it had only three hives left. They have used Imperial trade to aid to reclaim the planet bit by bit. Our forces helped with the push to reclaim another hive. When we left, they were well on their way to properly begin renovating said hive. The world may have been bleak, but the people were full of hope for a better future. Our next few stops were uneventful. I mostly stayed on board. Fulgrim has me working on my calligraphy since he saw my chicken scratch. My hands hurt. Yes, both, because he insists I become ambidextrous as well. Damn space Targaryen lookalike. Razit laughed at me, 
until Fulgrim forced him as well. We double stalked at an Agri world. We were going to be passing through pretty barren space for a bit. I wouldn't see another inhabited system for a while. At one stop to top off our water, we entered a system with 14 gas giants. Most of the other stops were in systems that had very little orbiting their small stars. Our proper psychers reported strange sightings. That wouldn't be odd for warp travel, but it's happening during our stops in real space. Knowing the universe, it spooked me a bit. We passed through the region without issue, other than lack of sleep crew-wide. At the next world, we all rested a bit more. It was a nice world, but one with tons of volcanic activity. The locals lived in domes, heated by lava tubes. The old human federation used some old as fuck tech to prevent the eruptions at these domes. Somehow this world had feral orcs, but the locals had that in hand. At a feudal world, we helped the locals with some lizard xenos. We made quick work of the scum. Afterward, one of the world's minor kings offered any of Razit's officers a pick of many daughters. The royal had 86 lawful children from his dozen wives, and he had many more bastards. All but four were girls. I could see how he might have an issue marrying them off. One of Razit's officers had taken a liking to one lass and took him up on the offer. After a quick wedding, which the can sang for, we headed out. Guy's got a great voice. 